Hello again, brothers and sisters in Christ. I have found this prophecy that was came through on my phone this morning. It came through just before I was about to lay down, or maybe it was yesterday. Anyway, the point is, I got it, <laughs> and I'm sure it was today, because I said, I'm, Lord, remind me to share that prophecy. I feel strongly in my spirit. That it is from God. Okay. Like I say. Like I'm trying to remember to say. If you don't think it is. If you have a red flag. Or check in your spirit. Please take it to the Lord in prayer. The issue. The sentence. Whatever that. You don't agree with. Um, because you know. You can put it on the shelf. Back, back in the back of your head, so to speak, you know, and wait and see, you know. But anyway, I'm going to share it because I believe it's from the Lord, and it's it was given to somebody called Alan Carrico, and I believe I've shared some things from him before that were on somebody's YouTube channel. Might have been Mike, Mike four 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 or something. I'm not sure, but anyway. This Alan Carrico has a blog spot, can't stop grinning dot blogspot dot com. In case you're interested, I'll try to remember. I'll put all that in the description box and the link to this page. Okay, the title he it was received October twenty second at six twenty eight a.m. And he got it out right away, so it got on um, Prophecy 444. Although I have to tell you, if you go there to read all the prophecies and dreams and so forth, they supposedly pray over everything before they put it up, because some things people share they don't put up. But we have found uh, several things that should not have been put up there. So I'm wondering about there you know, discernment. Maybe they weren't sure and they left it up to the individual whether to share it or not. You know? If, if you consider yourself a messenger of the Lord, you you should share it with this disclaimer that if you don't agree with something, take it to the Lord rather than withholding it, which is what I've been doing because I have feared that I might be sharing something wrong. Okay, I'm going to get started because it's long, okay? Hello, my son. This is Jehovah Elohim speaking with you this day. My children, I am is calling to each of you this day. Our father, Abba, it sounds like he said, called himself Jehovah Elohim and I am. It's calling to each of you this day. But keep in mind, Jesus said, I and the Father are one. I think later on he calls himself Jesus. So that's why they are one. So Jesus would think like Father and vice versa. But yet, isn't it odd that not even Jesus knows the day of the rapture? I always wondered about that. So clearly, Father can withhold some things. Alright, so I am is calling to each of you this day. I have been calling many, but few respond. Isn't that the truth? Okay, I'm sorry. I, I just want to read it. I want to try to keep Holy Spirit. Let me just deliver this message and only speak up if there's something you want me to say. Please, Lord. Let this be of you, uh, and totally of you, all of it. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. Okay, let me continue. So few are turning to God. Okay. Many are forsaking their blessings that I have to offer them because they do not turn to me in this time as I reach out to them. Because of this, many will suffer loss in the coming days. 
Is there anybody that can disagree with that? They will suffer loss. I will remove that which is reserved for them and give it to another. To one who does not respond to my pleadings and my hand upon them. Those who respond when I call them will now receive many blessings this day. I do this so that you will not suffer more than need be in the coming famine of both sustenance and my word. For few seek my word in this time. I think he is speaking to those who will be the second rounders in the second rapture because of the scripture pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things and to stand before the son of man that's Luke 21 36 keep in mind any prophecy you hear or read part of it might be for the first rapture bride of Christ 144,000, however you want to look at it. And part of it might be for the second rounders. Or the whole thing might be for the second rounders. People who have not been repenting, they haven't been living a sinless life, which I mean by that, purposeful sin, living with someone they don't, they don't want to get married for whatever reason, but they keep living with them. Or keep having sex with them. Or they keep doing things that are habitual. Things you just have to pray about. You have to seek the Lord about. To get rid of that bad habit. Okay. God will convict you of it. If you are serious about getting tight with him. And he will help you. When I was smoking my last... I was an on again, off again, on again, off again. I'd get tempted, I'd give in. Then I had to quit. The last time I was like, I have got to quit and stay quit. I don't want to ever smoke again. I prayed and prayed and prayed and I used the gum. I did use one pack of nicotine gum. And that helped. And... um like sucking on hard candy, you know, uh, when it wasn't time to have another Nicorette or whatever. I think I used a CVS store brand back then where I lived. Anyway, once I quit, I was like, praise the Lord, I don't want another cigarette. And I never did after that because Jesus helped me. All right, let me move on. Um, let's see will not suffer more. Okay, I do this so that you will not suffer more than need be in the coming famine of both sustenance and my word. For few seek my word in this time. Fewer still heed what they read. They'll read the word and then not do it. For this, that's how I used to live. I did used to live like that back in my 20s and up to, I married my last husband, my third husband. And I realized shortly after marrying him, Lord, I, I know now I don't need a man in my life. All I needed was you. I should have been crying out for you. Anyway, from that, from early on in my marriage, and I tried to make it work. We were separated three times, and the last time I walked out, I didn't go back. And I moved into a place where the locked, where it was a locked, uh, what do you call it, gated community, a gated apartment complex. And he had to have a number to get in so he couldn't just show up because he 
got kicked out of wherever he was living. You know what I'm saying? That's the kind of thing he would do and ask if he could come in and this way he couldn't and he knew then I was serious. Anyway, let me move on. Um, I didn't, I must have had to say that for somebody because I had no, no intention of bringing that up. All right. Uh, fewer still heed what they read. Okay, that's why I said that. For this reason, I will remove your blessing and give it to my remnant. My remnant. Okay, now he's talking about the few that go first. Who are close to me and will move when I say, quote, move, unquote, or stay put when I say, quote, stay put, unquote, period. Those who are close to me will move in great power now as I unleash my spirit upon them as it is in them and you will walk in newness of life. We're going to go outside of time and get our glorified bodies and come back to help those left behind. Those in the darkness, okay, see, darkness descends after we go. It's like a rapture. The Lord told me we went straight to heaven, but I don't, I got a piece of a puzzle. Other people got other pieces of the puzzle, and it's all coming together now. All right, so he says, those who are close to me, will move in great power now as I unleash my spirit upon them as it is in them and you walk in newness of life newness of life do you see that we'll have our new bodies and our superpowers those in the darkness or those left behind will either come to this light or be repelled back into the darkness, lest their sins be exposed. My children, the time of the great harvest is near upon you. That the great harvest will be the wheat harvest. The multitude too large to number appearing in heaven. Revelation 7-9 as unrest returns with more ferociousness than before, than before, you, my remnant, will be carried on wings as eagles, and you will be protected in this time. Yeah, Kathy had a vision of, or my, maybe it was a dream, but I think it was a vision. She saw a bunch of warriors, like soldiers, that looked to her like soldiers, walking right out of the middle of a nuclear explosion and totally unharmed, just like Meshach and Abed Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. All right. We will be protected in this time. Nothing will be able to hurt us or kill us. Draw close to me as I give you instruction that you may fulfill that which is ordained for you to do. Those things prepared beforehand. My obedient children, you are about to embark on the most glorious journey with me upon the earth. And then I will carry you home to me. Draw near my loves and we will move mountains. And he ended it with I am. Now the scriptures provided are I, I would like to read them as long as my throat holds out. 
it's getting rather sore from coughing, but I can tell the prednisone is helping. Okay, Jeremiah 14 in the King James Version. The word of the Lord that came to Jeremiah concerning the death Judah mourneth, and the gates thereof languish. They are black unto the ground, and the, the cry of Jerusalem is gone up. And their nobles have sent their little ones to the waters. The nobles. Do you suppose that's the upper muck of the Illuminati? Drowned their kids? I don't know because I know the children or little ones are going to be, they'll go to heaven. In the first rapture, they came to the pits and found no water. They sent their little ones to the waters. They came to the pits and found no water. They returned with their vessels empty. They were ashamed and confounded and covered their heads. Because the ground is chapped, for there was no rain in the earth getting dark put some lights on maybe that'll help get me through it okay because the ground is chapped okay um, they covered their heads yea the hind also calved in the field that means they gave birth to their babies and forsook it because there was no grass. They just left them to die. And the wild asses did stand in the high places. They snuffed up the wind like dragons. Their eyes did fail because there was no grass. O Lord, though our iniquities testify against us, do thou it for thy name's sake, for our backslidings are many. I didn't think they used that word in the King James Version in the Old Testament. But that's what it says, backslidings are many. We have sinned against thee, O oh, the hope of Israel. Try to think of this as America, or wherever you are. The Savior thereof in time of trouble, why shouldest thou be as a stranger in the land, as a wayfaring man that turneth aside to tarry for a night? Why shouldest thou be as a man astonished, or a mighty man that cannot save? Yet thou, O Lord, art in the midst of us, and we are called by thy name. Leave us not, thus saith the Lord unto this people. Thus have they loved to wander. They have not refrained their feet. Therefore the Lord doth not accept them. He will now remember their iniquity and visit their sins. He always did that with Israel. They were always getting into trouble. They stopped obeying. They started living their life the way they wanted. You could say they stopped living the straight and narrow path. That the way God wanted them to. And doing the sacrifices the way they were supposed to. And meaning it. Not just doing a ritual. Okay, I'll move on. Pray not for this people for their good. Pray, did you understand that? Then said the Lord unto me, Pray not for this people for their good. When they fast, I will hear their cry. And when they offer burnt offering and an oblation, I will not accept them. 
but I will consume them by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. The Lord means business. When he says do it, he means do it. When he says don't. Now remember, this was Old Testament. When Jesus came, he brought mercy and grace. And it is not to be taken advantage of. In other words, not all, all your sins when you repent and get saved are forgiven. When you ask forgiveness for all your sins. Now, as you grow in Christ, he may remind you of people in your past you need to forgive. Or of a situation that, um, I don't know, he just reminds you of things in your past you might want to repent of separately. But as when you get saved and your sins get forgiven, he's they're blotted out of the book of uh, your book. You have a book. Everybody has a book. Because it says that in Revelation, I think it's 20, somewhere in 2021, after the second resurrection, when every, all the people that didn't get to be resurrected in the first resurrection before the millennial reign are going to be resurrected after the millennial reign. And their books will be brought out. And if they have a bunch of sins written in there because they didn't bother to repent, that's when they get blotted out. You see? It's up to God if he wants to convict you of something to deal with separately. For your sake. So you can forgive yourself. Okay. Where was I? Then said... Wait a minute. Yeah, okay, that's where I am. I will not accept them. I will consume them by the sword and by the famine and by the pestilence. Then said I, Ah, Lord God, behold, the prophets say unto them, Ye shall not see the sword, neither shall ye have famine, but I will give you assured peace in this place. Have you heard that coming out of anybody's mouth? That Donald Trump is going to make America great again? And he was sent by God to do so? Okay, I'll move on. Then the Lord said unto me, The prophets prophesy lies in my name. I sent them not, neither have I commanded them, Neither spake unto them, they prophesy unto you a false vision and divination. So they can, a, a demon can give you a false message, a false vision, and divination. That's divining or tell, telling the future. If you know it, okay. Do you understand divination? And a thing of naught. In other words, something that's not going to happen. And the deceit of their heart. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that prophesy in my name. And I sent them not. Yet they say, sword and famine shall not be in this land. By sword and famine shall those prophets be consumed. And the people to whom they prophesy shall be cast out in the streets of Jerusalem because of the famine and the sword. And they shall have none to bury them because they believed them. Instead of the prophets telling them the other, they had no discernment clearly. Okay, and they shall have none to bury them, them. They're why, I don't know why they put them twice. Maybe it was a typo. Their wives, nor their sons, nor their daughters. For I will pour their wickedness upon them. Therefore thou shalt say this word unto them. 
Let mine eyes run down with tears night and day and let them not cease for the virgin daughter of my people is broken with a great breach with a very grievous blow and if I go forth into the field then behold the slain with the sword and if I enter into the city then behold them that are sick with famine Yea, both the prophet and the priest go about into a land that they know not. Hast thou utterly rejected Judah? Hath thou soul loathed? Here, let me move my phone, Jasper. Hast thou? Yeah, I'm going to feed you in just a minute, baby. I'm almost done. Hast thou utterly rejected Judah? Hath thy soul loathed Zion? Why hast thou smitten us? And there is no healing for us. We looked for peace, and there is no good. And for the t we looked for peace, and there is no good. I thought that used to say, and there was no peace. Maybe that's a different verse. And we looked for the time of healing, and behold, trouble. We acknowledge, O Lord, our wickedness and the iniquity of our fathers. For we have sinned against thee. Do not abhor us for thy name's sake. Do not disgrace the throne of thy glory. Remember, break not thy covenant with us. Are there any among the vanities of the Gentiles that can cause rain? Or can the heavens give showers? Art not thou he, O Lord our God? Therefore we will wait upon thee, for thou hast made all these things. Okay. Um... So, in other words, whatever, when God says obey, he means it. Or you get retribution. You will get punished for it. And that's why many will get left behind. But he's, it, because of Jesus coming to save us from our sins, he provided mercy and grace. And if you just ask for forgiveness of your sins, you will be forgiven. And they'll be blotted out of your your book. All right. Now, I'm just going to tell you, if you want to look up more, go to Romans 13. And, and then there's a link. Original article can be found here. And there's a link to his can't stop grinning dot blogspot dot com twenty twenty ten we will move mountains. So you can go to his website and get it uh from him his own if you want. Okay, I, I plead the blood of Jesus over this video. Um and I plead the blood of Jesus over all of us. And all of our devices and all of our internet connections. Okay? And I don't think we have long, brothers and sisters. I have another one to bring to you from Edward Umlings. And I, you know, I know that Jesus has said, I'm coming soon. I'm at the door. Or, you know, whatever. I'm here. And so... When he says, you know, Jesus is coming, the way he says it is sounds like, you know, it's tomorrow, you know. We've, I know I personally have received words like that. I've read and saw on videos so many words like that. And so I put off getting new glasses. I put off. 
uh, many things, you know. I wouldn't buy something I needed. I would give the money to somebody that needed it, you know, for food or health reason, whatever. And the Lord has blessed me tremendously just lately. So I was able, um, I meant to tell you, I know some of you don't listen all the way to the end, but those of you who do, I went to a second doctor. I might have mentioned this, but I don't think so. And the first doctor was right, but the second doctor at least gave me a prescription so I could try glasses. And I don't want the surgery. I see well enough with these. I just would like to read read better, you know, be able to read better. So my glasses I ordered online because their optical store was closed. That you could see the doctor, but you couldn't buy the glasses there. So I was like, oh brother, I'll just order them online and take my chances. And so hopefully they'll be here soon. And I hope I like them. I just don't even remember. I think I got multicolored ones, so they may look really weird on an old woman. I, I mean, most days I don't feel old. But here lately I kind of have. But I know when we get to heaven, we are going to be young. We'll be in those glorified bodies. We'll get our superpowers and our instructions and come back. Wherever we go to, I don't care. I don't care if it doesn't. we don't go to heaven right away. Some say we don't, but I don't care. We'll, we'll still see Jesus. He'll give us our instructions. And we won't need glasses, and we'll all be beautiful because all the weird things about our looks will be gone. That's why they didn't recognize Jesus when he rose from the dead and he Two men were walking down a road to the next town. He joins them, and they're uh, talking about all the stuff that went on and him dying. And he's like, "What are what is this thing y'all are talking about?" And they're like, "Where have you been, dude?" You know, <laughs> he didn't say dude, but <laughs> like, "Where have you been?" It's big news. They crucified. The holiest man around, or however they put it, I don't remember. Well, they ended up joining up with the apostles, I believe. Anyway, they had dinner. When he broke the bread, they realized, that's Jesus, the way he said it. So you see, the Bible says in Isaiah, I think, that he was not very comely, that man should want to follow him based on his looks. And so now he was probably very handsome. Just think about it. All of us will be. We'll still look like us. But our big noses will be regular, normal. And our little tiny set-apart eyes will be normal. That's why I want to wear glasses. I told that first doctor, I said, he said, I won't need glasses anymore. And I said, oh, man. I said, I have to wear glasses. That's my makeup. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to uh, say goodnight or goodbye for now. I'm going to feed my dog and myself. <laughs> and then I'll come back with the, um, the Edward Umbling and all the recalls. Okay? I pray I don't forget. I know that, that he's been putting out a lot lately. So if you're, you might be following him, but you might not catch them all. And I want to be sure you hear this one. Okay, bye for now. I'll, I'll be back soon.